Welcome to Coffee with a Googler. Today I'm gonna to be chatting with Peter Lewis, who's a product manager here at Google, and he's working with Beacons and showing us all the wonderful things that can be done with Beacons and the types of applications that you can build. And if you've ever built any applications with Beacons, the one thing that I would love to share with you and the one thing that we're gonna be talking about is just how much innovation is going on in that space and how much there still is to learn. For me, I had been building some applications that I didn't realize the power that was available from the Google SDKs and the various APIs and platforms that are out there. So we're gonna learn all about that and hopefully there'll be something useful for you with some instructions on how you can get started. So we're taking a little break from Firebase and shooting Firecasts and Ask Firebase and all these shows to have one of my favorite people at Google who works on one of my favorite technologies, Beacons. And Peter, welcome and thanks for coming all the way from the UK to chat with us. Thank you for having me. You're one of my favorite people at Google as well. <laughs> so it's great to be here and talking about you know the, uh, the technology that I work on. I'm a product manager in Google's location group. And one of the things that we, we work on is the Google Beacon platform, okay. uh, which in sort of includes Eddystone, which is a beacon format and a bunch of sort of cloud and mobile APIs for interacting with beacons. Okay, so just as a little bit of a reset for people who aren't familiar with them or have used them or play with them, like what exactly are beacons? These things are really simple devices. Mm -hmm. All that they do is repeatedly broadcast an identifier and that identifier marks an important place or an important object in a way that users' devices understand. Okay. So they give, they give phones a good idea about what matters in their environment. Okay. Here in Google, we've got these beacons all over the place, so we can have apps that say we're in a particular place, or in a conference room, or in a micro kitchen, or something along those lines. But so, what, what kind of ways would beacons are they used outside of Google in the real world? They're a location technology, and location matters in many apps, right? I mean, almost every app that you download cares about where the user is, so they can deliver a, a contextually relevant experience. Mm -hmm. And the Beacon platform is about taking that to the to the next level, about providing more reliable place detection and also more precise place detection. Okay. So what that means is that if you're building a feature in your app that sort of takes account of the fact that a user is in a particular place, right. that can become more precise and it can trigger more reliably as well. Okay. So beacons are a great way of providing the signal that a user's device needs in order to be able to deliver that kind of experience. So I've done a little bit of beacon development myself, and in my case, it was kind of primitive, where I was just like turning on the Bluetooth stack and sniffing like for beacons, and then if I detected a particular one, then I could respond to it, but I know you've got a platform that makes all of that so much easier. We wanted to take beacon development from something that only experts could do, <laughs> um, and then make it into a, a platform that's really easy for developers to get started with, and really to see something happening pretty much immediately when they start developing with beacons. So the way that we've done that is to make it so that you no longer have to care about the individual bytes that you know the radio in this thing is broadcasting and you know, right. BLE frequencies or whatever, and really to focus on what the functionality that you as an app developer want to enable is. Mm -hmm. So the way that we've done that is we've made it so that the identifier in the beacon just points to a cloud resource that you can update via an API, the Proximity Beacon API, or directly through our web dashboard that uh, that we have on our dev site. Okay, um, always good to have a dashboard. Yeah, absolutely that. <laughs> and the idea is that once you've deployed the, the infrastructure, once you've marked all of the places that you care about, you mm -hmm. can associate lots of different information with those places. Okay. And then you can get that information back to your app using the nearby API in Android or the CocoaPod that we have for iOS as well. Okay. And the experience for a developer shifts away from uh, I'm looking for these particular bytes that I had to keep track were with this particular beacon, all that kind of thing. Right. And more towards, in my app, I just create a subscription that says, tell me when I'm on platform nine at King's Cross Station. Okay, cool. And does it work when you're on platform nine and three quarters as well? Just. Uh, absolutely, <laughs> but we don't talk about that with muggles. <laughs> Fair enough. So like, one of the things that I found that when I was building apps for beacons was that it was very much like single beacon, single use and I just didn't have the imagination to go beyond that. So I was like writing a game that said, okay, when you're in this location, and when it detects that you're in this location, then it will unlock a part of the game. And then you, you do that part of the game, and then it tells you to go to another location. And then when you run over there, and it sniffs the beacon at that location, then it unlocks the next part of the game. And you know, it was really fun, and it was kind of interesting, but it was like a single beacon for single use. And I know you're really looking into more interesting scenarios than that. In the olden days, sort of the way you developed with beacons was to decide there was a particular feature of your app 
that you were going to point at with a particular beacon. Right. And that, that approach really wasn't something that scaled nicely, yeah. either for developers yeah. or you know, for the platform. And I think developers found very quickly that they had to start building and managing large databases of their beacons right. that were very difficult to share with other developers or reuse yeah. or all of these things. So Definitely. it was a bit of a pain. Mm. We, with the Google Beacon platform, have shifted away from that model of one beacon for one feature in one app and towards a model where you deploy the, the infrastructure, you mark all of the places that matter, mm -hmm. and then you decide what you want to do with them sort of per app that you're developing, really. So okay. you can get lots of different functionality from the same set of beacons. Okay. And that's a power that really comes from the fact that we treat beacons as, as cloud objects um, okay. within Google's beacon registry. Okay. So this is part of Google Cloud Platform. Uh, you register oh, beacons with the <laughs> with the cloud platform, and uh, once you've done that, you can associate sort of blobs of information with beacons that are meaningful not only to your app but to other developers' apps, to different bits of apps, and right. there are many different permutations. So, we were one of the first APIs to use Cloud Platform's Identity and Access Management uh, okay. Console. This is a tool that allows you to share resources in Cloud Platform with other developers. Okay. You know, I have a cloud platform project and I might say I want you to be able to fire up App Engine instances. Right. I can also say I want you to be able to use beacons that are in my beacon network, for example, and Got build it. experiences in your app based on my infrastructure. Got it. And Got all it. of these permutations are possible with the beacon platform. Okay. Is there like a concrete scenario or an example scenario that we can think of where if I've got an area with lots of beacons in it, how I can use those beacons in multiple ways? Absolutely. So one of the things we're most excited about recently is that the city of Amsterdam has been deploying beacons throughout the city okay. and then making them available to developers throughout the world. Okay. So the way they do that is they, they go and do the hard work of, of sticking these things up to bus stops and buses and trams and things like that. Mm. And they associate some information with those beacons. So they might be this bus stop ID or the routes of buses that stop there, that, okay. that kind of thing. And they use a new feature in Proximity Beacon API that allows them to make those blobs of data publicly accessible to any developer. Okay. So what this means is if you want to build an app that uses Amsterdam's beacon network, you just have to write code in Android Studio or for, for iOS using the, okay. using the CocoaPod. And this means that you can take advantage of their hard work deploying beacons and actually enable new contextual functionality in your app. Interesting. Where would I get started? So the easiest way to get started is with just a few beacons on your desk. And we've worked with many exactly like these beacons here. <laughs> we've worked with uh, many beacon manufacturers to make sure that uh, beacons are correctly broadcasting Eddystone and have sort of full support for the, the Eddystone specification that you can order from our developer site, g.co slash beacons. g.co slash beacons. <laughs> we have on, on GitHub, um, we have a, a set of Beacon Platform samples. Okay. Um, so GitHub, Google, Beacon Platform. And that has some, that has some sample apps in it. Um, in terms of SDKs, really the most important thing is to make sure you're using the nearby API, which is part of Google Play Services. Okay. So this is an API that lets you as a developer focus on, tell me about this kind of information Okay. And it takes care of the beacon scanning for you, works out whether it has that oh, kind nice. of information associated with the beacon, right. and then just returns it to your app as a, as a message. Oh, nice. Yeah, because as a difference, that, just how valuable that is when I was writing my app, it was like there were hundreds of beacons around me, and for a particular one, I was getting the ID, and I had to maintain a database you know, to query, oh, if you got this beacon, then here's the data or here's the things that you want to do associated with. Yeah. So and we, we all that's a, taken out of my that's, hands. That's all right? taken away so that you can focus on the feature that you want to build. And Super cool. Making your app contextual is difficult enough as it is. <laughs> yes, so it is. making it so you can focus on the feature is really important to us. Cool. Uh, we also have a code lab. Ah, uh, okay. Yeah, so there's a, a Hello Beacons code lab that you can do, uh, code labs developers Google.com. Okay. And that will walk you through creating a nearby subscription. Okay. So what this means is that you can essentially write a piece of functionality in your app that says, tell me about beacon messages that have this namespace and type. And then it'll just go and find them for you. Exactly. Cool. Well, thank you so much, Peter. 
So if you've been juggling and how to get started with Beacons, well, we've got a great website for you. Just go to g.co slash beacons. You can download everything. There's samples, there's documentation, everything you need to get started with building applications with this wonderful technology. Thank you so much. I did it.